Howdy there, Instagram. It's uh, Stowside Chats. It's Wednesday afternoon, halfway through the week. Thank you for joining us. My name is Chad Blackwelder, North Carolina Department of Agriculture. I do food service marketing. <clears throat> so I get to work with a lot of cool chefs, one of which we'll be talking to here in a few minutes, and a lot of other cool people um, who help feed our state, the nation, and the world. So Cape Fear Oysters, thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. <clears throat> so we have Chef Taisha Whitaker joining us today. Um, hey, everybody, for waving in. We appreciate that. Lots of love. Thank you so much. Um, chef Taisha Whitaker. She has Buttermilk Boutique in Clayton. She's an awesome pastry chef and is one of the um, Got to BNC Culinary Ambassadors. Um, as well as a winning chef from the 2019 Chef Showdown, which was the last one we had. Until this year, we're going live again with the Chef Showdown. It's actually starting the first round in Beaufort next week, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, we're just waiting on Chef Ty to join us. Give her just a little bit longer. Um, let's see. So next week, we have Chef Duke Kroger, the outlaw of Onslow, as I like to call him. Um, he is the chef at... Um, Biagio's in downtown Jacksonville, North Carolina. Really cool fellow. We'll be talking to him. And then the first of next month, we have um, uh, Miso Masters is going to be joining us. Um, thank you guys for waving in. Uh, they're making some of the best miso in the world. They're doing it right here in North Carolina. <clears throat> so we'll be having that conversation. Um, just a heads up, Stoveside Chats. Laughing spell, hello. Stoveside Chats is going to be going to a once a month um, situation. We're getting into our busy season. Um, thank goodness we're doing in-person events again. Um, so we're getting out on the road and sponsoring some of those events. Um, so my time, my schedule, my calendar has gotten pretty busy here in the last couple of weeks. So we'll still be doing the Stoveside Chats. We're, we're going to be doing them um, the first Wednesday of every month. So there you go. All right, there, Chef. Hey, Chef. Hi. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Your audio is great, by the way. Thank perfect. you. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. So for those who are joining us, this is Chef Taisha Lewis. Ty, thank you for joining us. Um, Ty is – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little bit of an intro, and then I'm going to let you explain your background, that sort of thing. Um, Ty has Buttermilk um, Boutique um, in Clayton. Um, she's an incredible pastry chef. Again, she was the People's Choice winner, which I think is a really great way to win something when the people are behind you. But anyway, she was the People's Choice winner at the uh, 2019 Chef Showdown. And part of that win is becoming a Got to BNC Culinary Ambassador. Um, it's, we haven't really done a lot this last year considering all the craziness and not really being able to do in-person stuff, but we're going to get back on track with that. So, Ty, tell the folks about your background, how you got into cooking, and what led you from Texas to Clayton. Oh, gosh. So, um, my great-grandmother and my grandmothers on both sides are avid bakers. Um, so, I definitely got started as uh, a family thing um, during the holidays for church uh, for birthday parties, for, the, for family members, we would bake all the time, and that's really where my love for it uh, came about. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer way back when. Um, I baked um, for classmates because of stress and things like that. Um, fast forward to 2012, I got a chance to get my master's degree in gastronomy from Boston University, and that really... Uh, catapulted me into the food industry from uh, working alongside Jacques Pepin and some of the other great chefs in Boston, uh, some of the premier cake um, and wedding cake and pastry uh, bakeries there, just really diving in right after grad school and really never looking back. I got my first bakery gig at a gluten-free bakery called Glutenous Minimus. And um, from there, it was just 
uh, going from different bakeries in Boston, working multiple jobs, just trying to get my foot into the industry. Um, in 2013, I moved here. I started fine pastry at the uh, Carolina Country Club on Glenwood Avenue. And from there, I've just uh, taken different positions, going a little bit higher and further, and uh, until I was ready to open my own business. Home-based right now, but definitely looking for uh, brick and mortar in Clayton. Um, love competing with uh, NCRLA, the Chef Showdown, participating in all the events for Got to Be in uh, NC. I love it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to this year's competition. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I can't wait. Um, now, I didn't realize you got your master's in gastronomy. That's awesome. And yes. correct, correct me if I'm wrong, the kind of the, the, the jump off point for Buttermilk, Buttermilk Boutique was when you were in business school, right? So I took a business course during that master's degree program. And so that was kind of my final to write a business plan. And that's how Buttermilk uh, Boutique was born from that from that business class and just really having a passion for it, but not knowing the financials and things like that behind yeah. it and what it took to run a business. That business ventures course is what set it off. That's really cool. I had a conversation. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Carolina kettle chips out of Raleigh. Um, yeah. They make awesome chips, but Josh, Josh did the same thing when he was going to state his, that's how he started his business was it was, a project related to one of his business classes, and here he is now making some of the best chips ever. So that's really, really cool. Definitely. Um, now, I want to circle back around to um, the Chef Showdown. Um, tell the folks about my favorite dessert that you made. So I think it would be the last one, which was the uh, dessert that I named Corn Pudding. So it's actually shaped like a – like one of the mini herbs of corn, like you would get in your grocery store frozen section. Um, inside of that white chocolate shell that looked like corn was a, a sweet corn pastry cream, a Good Night Brothers, I actually used their bacon, uh, bacon corn streusel. I dehydrated some corn. I used the fat renderings from their awesome bacon to make a streusel that was in there and then i used which i still use i love ran Lou's, uh buttermilk i used that in my kind of cornbread and vanilla cake had a baby cake so <laughs> it was a it was a <laughs> buttermilk corn cake all encased in that white chocolate shell and then i served it with a salted butter ice cream that was incredible and a, and a caramel yeah. And it was uh, a caramel sauce. And it looked so cool. The um, the ice cream you put on there, it looked like butter melting over the little – it was such a brilliant idea. And, uh, Thank you. All the, all the folks you mentioned, I, I get to work with a lot. Good night, brothers. Um, I was just up there touring some of their plants, and um, they sent me home with some of their bacon, which is always cool. Oh, and then, yeah. of course, my man Randy Lewis at Ramloo Dairy. You know, as, as often as I can hang out with him, that's, that's always a great experience. Yeah, um, he's awesome. Yeah, he really is. Now, you talked about being influenced by your grandmother. I was much the same way. Um, I watched a video of you, um, your interview with Our State Magazine, which is online. You guys check oh, yeah. it out. It's a great interview. Um, and you mentioned your grandmother always had a cake around. And mine, my, my mom, all Janie, my dad's mom, she always had a pound cake. Like, we could be over there at dinner, and we would finish it off. We would go there the next morning. There was another cake there all the time. Definitely. Yeah, so that's such a cool yeah. experience. Um, what kind of advice did she give you about cooking or baking that, that you still you still abide by today? So I think the greatest piece of advice that she gave me was to follow your instincts. And sometimes I find that when I don't, things go awry. And so really, especially recently, I've just been leaning into my instincts, trusting it, trusting that I know what I'm doing, trusting that I know the flavors and that. I know the cooking times and that I know the ingredients and I know when something's missing, really trusting that. And she did that. Both of my grandmothers, uh, they did that effortlessly. And yeah. so that's something that I really strive for whenever I bake, just to trust my instinct 
and you know just to and not be afraid they weren't afraid to try different things they weren't afraid to fail so definitely just trusting my instinct and you know going for the gusto yeah that's that's really smart and you know i think that comes with experience i remember being a young cook and being frustrated with you wanted to know everything but you just didn't know how to do it you didn't have those of course. Uh, you didn't have the technical chops yet but you know with the older you get the more scarred but smarter right the more you learn the more yeah. you can kind of count on those instincts um my yeah, grand um i think you'll appreciate this my grand my grandmother told me years ago always to put a little something sweet in a savory dish and something a little salty in a sweet dish so i try to i try to stick and that's that true also. that's so yeah. true i'm um that's just uh, a uh, classic balance. Yeah, it truly, truly is. Um, so how do you describe how your southern roots and your um, gastronomy background kind of come together on the plate? So uh, gastronomy essentially is just the study of food and culture. And so what I really took from that program was it's okay to take different pieces and make it your own. Mm -hmm. And so what I love about my Southern roots is that I can still bring in that nostalgia of grandma's sweet potato pie or, you know, big mama's butter pound cake. And I can put that in something modern, say, you know, the corn pudding dessert or my peach cobbler dessert, really taking it up another notch and still staying true to those ingredients while showcasing, you know, a different set of skills um, that can still hone in that nostalgia. Yeah. And I think, um, I think that's, that's me. That's where I'm at now. I think for a long time, I, struggled to find my niche myself, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, well, maybe I'm a French chef or maybe I'm this kind of chef or maybe because I spent time here, that's the kind of food <laughs> I'm doing when really my background is in the South. I love to make things pretty. I love to make them breathtaking. And so I take that and, and I go and I go forth. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, is that, do you think that's a, Again, a function of, of kind of, you know, getting a little bit older, sort of maturing a little bit. When I was a younger cook, I, I didn't avoid the foods I grew up with necessarily. I think that I was just maybe a little bored with it and wanted to, you know, French and Thai and all this other stuff. But the older I got, yeah. I, gra I gravitated more toward what I grew up with and then, like you said, wanted to put that spin on it. Well, and then I think you also have to look in the media. When I was doing the culinary portion of that program, it was very French focused. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that that was it, that, you know, that this is what, this is what I'm supposed to be because this is what I'm learning when yeah. really there's nothing wrong. And I think it's important for your culture, for my culture to bring those roots in and to show that, you know, you can put, you can, you can have Southern uh, flavors with French technique, you can do yeah, that, absolutely. and it's okay, and it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And um, and and so yes, I think that's something um, that you learn as you get older and as you work in different kitchens, and then too, just as you find yourself. Like even if you worked in the same type of kitchen for your whole career, finding yourself as something different and then staying true to that is, I think, that's the real testament. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that um. Again, you know, most people's formal culinary background is rooted in French technique, but it's cool to see, like, there are other food ways and other cultures out there, and it's cool that those are getting some spotlight and getting some love. And um, it's funny, I had a conversation with Chef Travis Myers about a year ago, and we were talking about going to culinary school, and we had sort of the same kind of light bulb moment, you know, like when I was in culinary school, like, oh, bechamel, that's a white gravy, you know, or pate that's cold meatloaf you know that's a lot of stuff that you're kind of familiar Definitely. with but when you kind of can you know get that technical learning and put those names with it and and it kind of you know as confusing as it can be once you make those connections it kind of starts to demystify the technical french world i guess um that and then you're not afraid to try those techniques on on your common food and make it exactly, even yeah. better that's exactly right 
Um, so now you said that you're a home-based business um, and you have goals of brick and mortar. Um, and at one point, you were, were you talking about maybe doing a food truck? I want a pastry truck. Pastry truck, of course, yeah, absolutely. That would be all. You don't really yeah. see that many of those. I mean, you really, really don't. And I want, I want to bring fine pastry to all of North Carolina. I love that. I mean, southern, a little southern twist on it. I, I love that idea. Talk about some of the challenges of having a home-based business. Space. <laughs> Space. Space. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. Right now, I've got three refrigerators, so it's just. I'm always competing for space, um, keeping the business separate from home life can be hard sometimes. You know, uh, I have two little ones, so them always kind of being in the way can be a little bit of a hindrance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think too, not being able to take on as much as I would like to because of that, you know, compared to a bakery, a home, a home or a townhome is a is a small space, yeah. so yeah. it's just difficult. So I have to turn a lot of uh, clients away just because I don't have the space to to house to house what they need. Yeah, and that was going to be my next question: is how do you balance all that you do with having? What are you, your babies are what about two years old, give or take? One and two. One and two. Okay, so. Yeah. A young family. How does how does that work? I mean, <laughs> I have no idea how you do all that. So I mean, they're on my hip, just like they were at the competition. They're you know, they're in tow. Yeah. And and it's always been that way. And um, now they're getting older, so it's actually getting a little easier. You know, mm -hmm. I can you know put the baby gate up and they'll watch from afar, as opposed to having you know to hold them and to cradle them all the time. Yeah. So yeah. it it can definitely be difficult, but my husband is a chef, um, and he's he's there right with me. My father, uh, he's a truck driver, but when he's in town, he's right there with me. He was right there with me at the competition. Yeah. Uh, my mother-in-law is a big help when I'm, you know, in a crunch. She'll take the kids for me. Um, my job, actually, I work a full-time job um, here in Raleigh. Um, I'm a pastry chef for an independent living facility, and I make my own schedule. So it's very, it, they're very flexible, you know, with me. And so I've got a lot of angels in my corner. You do. You've got, <laughs> you've got quite a support system there. That's that's yeah. fantastic. Now, um, I, I was reading about the role, the your role at the um, assisted facility place in Raleigh, and. Um, Tell the folks about the cookies that you did that had a message on it and how those came about. That's such a heartwarming story. So that was probably now about a year ago um, when I first heard we were on um, extreme lockdown. So no one in and no one out except for employees and caregivers. So no family, no friends um, for our residents. Um, and so it was just pretty much us and them on a day-to-day, -day, and they were really – you know, kind of trapped here because they couldn't go out and, you know, we could go home, but this was, you know, this building was it for them for quite a while. And so um, I used, I put on events for them, little tea parties and things like that, just to show that I'm thinking about them. And one day I'd walk by a group of ladies that live here and it was really a sad conversation that they were having. One had talked about drinking more and, you know, not being able to see her grandkids and, you know, another one talked about not being able to see her son that used to come every weekend. And so it was really, you know, the morale here was really, you know, down for everybody, but especially for our residents. And so I thought of these message cookies, um, sugar cookies that I could ice and write on, you know, I miss you. I love you. I'm thinking about you. Um, you're gorgeous. You know, I love your hair. Just little messages that they got. And I did it maybe once or twice a month just to kind of let them know that we were thinking about them and that their families were thinking about them and that they weren't forgotten. Wow. That is, that's great. That's so cool. Um, what, a, what a sweet thing to do. Um, so let's end on, let's, again, about talking about Buttermilk, um, uh, Buttermilk Boutique. Um, how the folks can find you, what, what services you offer, how they can get – Get their goods. So give us a story okay. on all that. So um, Instagram at buttermilk underscore boutique um, because it's the fastest way to kind of update and keep everybody afloat. That's where the most current information is as 
far as uh, the cakes and cupcakes that I do. Um, you can also find my desserts at Plates Neighborhood Kitchen. I wholesale desserts for them, and so I've got a couple of things on the menu right now. So if you are anchoring for a fix-in right now, they've got some of my cakes on the menu. Um, I also have a website, www.buttermilkboutique.com, and I started off uh, strictly weddings, but I do parties and dessert tables. Um, again, like I said, I do wholesaling and things like that, and I also do just because cupcakes, cookies, uh, and my all-time favorite chocolate. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, it's funny. I um, I was watching uh, YouTube videos the other day, and there was a video of like top twenty foods you have to eat before you die, sort of thing. And there was a I think a diner in Cincinnati where they make these big tall chocolate cakes every day and what's left over they'll use to make chocolate milk milkshakes out of you know I mean they'll put the chocolate cake in the thing and blend it all together but I saw yeah. that and this was probably about five o'clock I think Monday afternoon and I got up immediately and made a chocolate cake like I wanted yeah. I wanted chocolate so bad that I just made a chocolate <laughs> cake so um, and I, I, we happen to have all, everything to be able to do it with but um, thank you so much for sharing your time I know you're super busy yeah, right wow. now um, and um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks down in Oriental. Yes, I'm so excited. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Chad. All right. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.